Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Make It Destination. My name is Amanda and this is where I help you make it to your destination. And this week, if you can't already tell by the title, we're going to be going through the history of Lake George. If you're from upstate New York, you know that Lake George is a summer staple. It's somewhere where your friends, family, acquaintances, people that you knew in high school all flock to in the summer. At least once or twice because from the capital region it's only I think like 45 minutes to get to Lake George especially when you take the highway or route 9 and so I wanted to understand how Lake George even became a popular tourist destination it's a beautiful lake there's a lot of hikes around that region it's in the Adirondack Park I just wanted to see kind of how it's changed throughout the years and especially with our current situation now in 2022, I wanted to see has tourism grown during the last two years? Has it stayed the same or has it slowed? Are you interested in learning about the history of tourism of Lake George? Continue watching and let's get into it. Before we get into this video, make sure you hit the like button if this is more content you want to see. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. And let me know in the comments what your favorite thing to do in Lake George is or just a cool fun fact that I didn't include in this video. So we're gonna start off with some background information for those who are not familiar with the area or if you just wanna know more about the environmental or like geographic landscape of Lake George. Lake George is located in upstate New York and it's at the southern end of the Adirondack Park and it is considered one of the cleanest, clearest, large lakes in the world. And the way Lake George was actually formed was by melting glaciers about 10,000 years ago, which is really cool just to know that it was you know, changing of the earth that created Lake George. The clarity and beauty of the Lake George water body and the surrounding kind of woodsy region have awed visitors and residents alike for years now. There's just something about the landscape that even if it's not so, super far from your home, it feels like it transports you somewhere. And I think that's why a lot of people have enjoyed Lake George and have bought cabins or go year after year or go to summer camp up there because there's just a, a beauty and a kind of almost magic to Lake George. And so Lake George was previously called Caldwell and Lake George was called Andia Tarokte by Native Americans and was later called Luke, <laughs> my pronunciation on this is very bad, Luck du Saint Sacrament by Father Isaac, the first white man to see the lake in 1646. Now there is contention about who was really the first to find Lake George, but many of the sources that I found said that Father Isaac was the first white man to see the lake. And then finally, the name changed to Lake George in 1755 by Sir William Johnson for King George II of England. You could tell that the area has been called many different things throughout time, but that's how it kind of became the Lake George that we know today. And so there are artists who went to the region, similar to the Catskills, who were just amazed and in awe of the region. So there's a lot of rich history in Lake George. Now, we're not going to get into that in, the, in this video. We're going mainly in the history of tourism. So I'm not going to focus on the books that were written or pictures that were drawn of the region. We're not doing kind of the artsy side, we're gonna be doing the tourism side. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of the video and talk about the history of tourism. All right, so now we're getting into the history of tourism in Lake George. And so surprisingly, I did not know that a lot of famous or wealthy people went to Lake George. Lake George was a vacation destination for several US presidents such as George Washington in 1783 and Thomas Jefferson with James Madison in 1791. So if you don't know, Thomas Jefferson and James Madison were very close friends. And so they took a month off from their political and governmental duties in the early summer of 1791 for an excursion in the Lake George area. They were amazed by the beauty and the awe of the region. So they went fishing, they visited local forts, and they sailed on Lake George and were enthralled just with the pristine waters of the lake. And just, again, I think they have that feeling of just being able to go away, but not having to go super far for a getaway. And it's really cool, just history-wise, that there were a few U.S. presidents that, that went. And even Theodore Roosevelt climbed Mount Marcy and the High Peaks, 
which obviously isn't like, it's the region, so it wasn't like he was like swimming in the lake, but Theodore Roosevelt climbed Mount Marcy in the high peaks of the Adirondacks, and he actually learned that he became president while in North Creek, which I think is a little west to Lake George. Lake George Steamboat Company was founded in 1817, and it's still the largest steamboat company in the area. They have three boats, and you could go on the steamboat and go across the lake, and so for those who are from upstate New York, you probably know these and maybe even have been on a boat ride. There's the Mohican too, the Minnehaha, which I've, every time I go to Lake George, I see the Minnehaha. I feel like as you grow up in the area, it's just something that locals know about. And then the Lac du Saint Sacrament, which again, I probably butchered that name but those are the three that they run. So on average, from year to year, the area generates $2 billion from the tourism industry, which is very substantial for upstate New York. The way tourism kind of started, other than the US presidents going and kind of increasing that popularity, is the businesses. So the main businesses at the time, pre the steamboat company in 1817, was lumbering with several sawmills, there was also the steamboats that came in 1817. And along with that came the D&H Railroad. And I believe this railroad connected Montreal to New York City. And Lake George was the midpoint of that, which kind of started the boom of tourism in the region. So it's very important to remember that for several tourist destinations, transportation routes are most likely why they're popular. Wealthy people because of all these businesses, right? The DNH Railroad, the Steamboat Company, the sawmill started opening up. Wealthy people started to buy homes along Route 9N, Bolton Road, and along the east shore of Lake George. And what this is called is Millionaire's Row. Some mansions still there to this day, and you could go and see them. Some of them, because of the climate in the 1930s, cough, cough, the Great Depression, some of them were converted to restaurants or hotels, but it's really cool to know and see that there's Millionaire's Row for the wealthy people that flock to Lake George. In 1845, the first courthouse in the area was built, and soon stores came along, restaurants and doctor's offices came as well. So now you not only have people who are tourists going and visiting the area, but now you're getting gaining a community. You are building a residential area for people to actually stay. So the thriving community changed from one who relied mainly on the lumber industry to one that relied on tourism. The constructions of hotels started, cabins, especially near the lake because obviously that's the focal point of the area. In the late 19th and 20th century, some of the wealthy and rich people that went, some families that visited Lake George were the Roosevelt's, Van Rensselaer, Vanderbilt, Rockefeller, and Whitney families were frequent visitors to the region. And like I said before, Millionaire's Row, some of those mansions got converted because of things going on in the 1930s to restaurants and hotels or resorts. Lake George in the 1930s started to become affordable to the middle class and many of the mansions, you know, switched over. And so I think this is where you start to see more middle class people starting to go to Lake George, right? The home started to get affordable. Now there's a courthouse, there's stores, there's restaurants. So now you're building a community and you know word of mouth gets out about lake george and slowly but surely that's where families want to bring you know their children in the summer their summer camps and it's a quaint town that offers a lot and i think that's most likely what attracted people is that the pristine waters you get to boat there's something almost like all american about it right and so i think that's what really drew people into lake george and what makes it Lake George to this day. Going off from that, we're gonna be talking about tourism today and how it is with the current climate and what trends I kind of predict or could see from the current situation we're in. So let's get into it. All right, so now we're gonna get into talking about tourism today and how Lake George has fared in the climate that we're in at the moment. When things started to open up again, Lake George was cautious when it came to tourism after the closure and slash, you know, things closing down. They were kind of hesitant, but 
I, I would say hopefully optimistic that it would be a good tourism season, but I don't think they expected much, right? Many places were kind of questioning if people would feel safe, what activities they could offer, and then also being short staffed, how that would kind of fare in the tourism climate. So with their second summer after the closings, they are doing better than ever, honestly. With an 83% occupancy level in August, and this number doesn't include Airbnbs, Verbo, any like short term, like private home rental. That's better than they did pre 2020. I think pre 2020, I think I have the statistic here. It might have been 80 or 75 percent occupancy during that same time. And if you contrast that to other summer, like other Northeast summer destinations, Cape Cod had an occupancy rate of 80 percent around the same time. So they're doing pretty well. In Lake George, the average hotel room price is two twelve a night, right? You can have you can have your lower end ones, motels, smaller mom and pop shops, or you can have your higher end sort of resorts, you know, like the Sagamore or the Inn at Earl West. Two twelve a night, it's not not too bad. And then again, that, that doesn't include Airbnb, so they they could be more affordable than hotels. And hotel revenue across the county in and of itself was $98.2 million for June, July, and August in 2021, which is great. I mean, Lake George is doing well. Unfortunately, um, I think it was the president of the Chamber of Commerce said that the toughest part of the season was the labor shortage. But even with this problem, Lake George did relatively well for not having the staff that they typically do to run the tourism season. For example, the Fort William Henry usually employs 300 employees, including 120 students, who come through the J-1 program, but due to travel restrictions, only 34 students were able to work through this program. Again, it's a difficult time for the hotel owners, resort owners, restaurant owners, whatever the case may be, but they are still able to push through and have a better than ever tourism season. And they kind of did, I don't want to say a survey, but I think they wanted to see who was mainly going to Lake George at this time. And it, they said in this article that 70% of just like Fort Henry's visitors were first timers who lived within 60 miles of New York City. So this comes to my conclusion of this video, which is I think people are starting, especially with you know everything that happened in 2020, I think people are starting to look in their own backyard for things to do, right? Before, especially for those who live near the city. You could fly anywhere you want to, out of JFK, LaGuardia, even Newark. And so people were like, okay, I don't really need to explore New York because I live in New York. So I'm just gonna, you know, go to Italy or Germany or Japan or South Korea, whatever the case may be. But now that people are questioning the validity of leaving the country, I think people want something that's easy to plan. People don't want to go through, oh, you know, do I need, what what entry and exit requirements are needed? People don't want to ask that and then have to plan in another country and then have to figure out, are they going to feel safe? If you go two, three hours from where you live, it feels far away enough, but you don't have to do all the extra work that you normally have to do when you go to an international destination. I also think that you know, in in addition to exploring your own backyard, I think people love outdoor activities right now. And you don't want to be in the city in the summer. It's very sticky, hot, humid. And so I think a lot of people are looking to escape that. A lot of New York City residents go to the Catskills, right? Because sometimes the Adirondacks feel a little far from New York City. But I think they're looking for something new, something different that maybe they haven't thought of going traveling to before. And so Lake George is that perfect like middle ground of outdoor activities, cool restaurants, a nice little like village, you know, the Lake George village where you can like walk around, there's shops, a whole bunch of cool stuff to see. There's a Maricade, I think it happens in like June, which is like a motorcycle sort of festival. It's one of those where if you haven't explored it, you feel like you you might be missing out the pristine waters and that water's cold but I mean on a hot day I mean you're gonna jump right in but it's just a lot of fun and I think with everything that happened in 2020 people just want a simple easy to plan vacation to somewhere maybe they never thought they would ever go and sometimes that's your own backyard I really hope you enjoyed this video this was a fun one to do 
I have been a lover of Lake George for years now. I try to go up every summer. Again, let me know in the comments what you do in Lake George or any fun facts that I missed out on. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. Until next time.